Ringan. The main product is Korean imported construction finisher. The silicon exclusively sold by Min Huang's company is being used for all of Vietnam's newly constructed buildings. He must hire more employees because he is unable to meet the weekly orders. As apartments and stores buildings in Ho Chi Minh are constructed, Korean door locks are being called in and installed. 24-hour days are too short. He made quite a bit of money selling Korean-made construction materials, but he still has a long way to go to achieve his goal. Min Huang dreaming of becoming the greatest construction materials group in Vietnam. Like a youth in his 20s, he does not wait on formality. The green youth able to be energized by just a meal in a street vendor's shop is a valuable asset for today's Vietnam. Even in California's Silicon Valley, a network to fortify Vietnam's growth has been put to work. Vietnam is going through a transition period right now which is sort of ironic because it is the best time to invest when it's going to a transition. I think there's differences in three main categories. Uh, one is the business landscape uh, that I observed. Uh, and two is the customer uh, culture. And three is the team culture because I'm a very oper operationally oriented guy. I, I observe and pay a lot of attention to these things. Platform being introduced into, being used. One is GSM, one is CDMA. In Silicon Valley, there is a 1,500 strong Vietnamese network. Highly skilled people are going out of their way to secure global investment for Vietnam. With overseas Vietnamese securing investment, the Vietnamese economy has added another growth engine. People in Vietnam, young people in Vietnam are very smart. They surprise me every time. I have a lot of respect for them. The things that they don't know, maybe we can contribute a little bit, mm -hmm. just because of our experience. But then, our experience with the smart of the local young people in Vietnam, that's a great combination. And I believe a, a winning combination mm -hmm. for us. They are focusing on Vietnam's IT industry. Since 63% of the population are young, born after the end of the Vietnamese War in 1975, they deemed it possible for a great growth potential. In Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or anywhere in Vietnam to go walk past an internet cafe and watch kids interact in terms of Yahoo Messenger, in terms of, of games and see how communication is actually. Henry, who came over to the U.S. when he was two, succeeded in securing $100 million for the growth of Vietnam's IT industry. CNN has covered his decision regularly. He became a hit when he invested in the future of his motherland when everyone else hesitated. But most importantly, I would say that to do it in Vietnam was really the, the important part of the job for me. I think I've often told friends that if someone gave me the same job in Thailand, China, or India, I probably wouldn't have taken it and returned to the U.S. And it's not because they wouldn't have been interesting jobs. Mm -hmm. I think what it, what it let me understand is that a deeper reason for me to do this work is, is to, to be a part of Vietnam's growth, to, to really help in terms of focus certain investments in, in the technology sector in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. and, and my dream, really, for the long term is, is that in 20 years to have Vietnam be one of the top centers of technology.
Henry became IDG Ventures, regional director in Vietnam in 2002. He started actively working as a new generation leader for Vietnam's IT industry growth. His work is to identify young Vietnamese IT companies with potential for success and fund them. Carefully analyzing the flood of investment requests. In the analyzing level, Henry looks at market orientation and the leader's capability the most. When investment is decided, not only capital, but also all the infrastructure needed for the IT industry will be provided for five years. He does not invest in hopes of short-term return. There are contracts of new IT companies that Henry invested in on the wall. 16 IT ventures have grown due to Henry's funding. PSOF developed Vietnam's first online auction site. And VinaPay started a mobile paying service. Vina Game is Vietnam's first online game company. There is even a company that creates UCC websites and exports them. Vietnam's biggest music website also passed through Henny's hands. When people had said, well, why are you investing in Vietnam? You know, is it too early? Um, and his belief was, and I, I feel the same way, is that you know, it's better to be early in this situation than to be late, because once it's late, it's you probably lose certain opportunities. Um, but secondly, I think really what it was was a very, very strong belief in Vietnam growth in general. Uh, and then on a, on a, I'll say a smaller level, is really believing in the potential of a technology market developing here. Henry is not an investor who invests capital and waits solely for return. He shrewdly watches over and funds companies he invested in. He directly visits those companies, and keeping up with their status is his daily work. Sonotech, a small venture with just 25 employees, is also a company Henry invested in and funds. It is a new venture that is the first to provide services for offline stock exchange in Vietnam. Sonotech CEO reports to Henry about the company's operations and receives advice and funding for effective management. He acts as a midwife for Vietnamese competent IT activists to grow. Even in Hanoi's common living area, there are skilled IT activists growing their dreams. Dream Viet, a new venture which started in 2005, has 18 employees. Although it is a small office with old computers, Dream Viet's young workers have developed Vietnam's first price comparing website. It is made so that one, can compare different prices from different manufacturers and shops. Người tiêu dùng họ thích xem nhất là một điện thoại di động và máy ảnh máy quay. Vì hiện nay thì trên thị trường Việt Nam á, cái giá cả của điện thoại di động và máy ảnh máy quay nó nó rất là tức là cái độ chênh lệch về giá cả sản phẩm ấy nó không 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 nó rất là cao giữa các công ty với nhau á. Since it is still at the investment level, even the CEO's office is not much to look at. For the young leader of Dream Viet, this is both office and home. Hugh, with his vast experience, is an up-and-comer that the Vietnamese IT field is focusing on. In 2006, he was one of the top 25 Asian youth businessmen. 
that Newsweek chose. The youth's determination and challenging spirit is the energy source of Vietnam's IT industry. On the outskirts of Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon's high-tech park is under construction to become Vietnam's Silicon Valley. To become Asia's IT superpower, the Vietnamese government has started to actively participate. The huge company Intel has already set aside $1 billion for its factory construction. Intel's groundbreaking ceremony last April blew a confident air into the Vietnamese government's progress towards their goal as an IT superpower. Phát triển của Việt Nam đặt ra những ứng dụng công nghệ thông tin rất là cần và càng ngày càng rộng. Cái thứ ba là dân tộc Việt Nam cũng dân tộc ham học hỏi, cầu tiến bộ. Cho nên chắc chắn là thế hệ trẻ sẽ tiếp cận vấn đề nhanh. Hiện nay chúng tôi quyết tâm để nhanh cái ứng dụng công nghệ thông tin để làm cái thông thoáng cái quản lý trong nhà nước. Và nhiệm vụ chính trị quan trọng nhất của Bộ Thông tin Truyền thông trong năm 2008 đến đến 2010 là ứng dụng công nghệ thông tin trong quản lý nhà nước. Và tổ chức chính phủ điện tử. A TV program set in which one can see what the interests of Vietnam's university students. Many young people like to watch. MTV. What does MTV stand for? <laughs> Importing Korea's Challenge Golden Bell, this is Vietnam's version of Challenge Golden Bell. <laughs> Quizzing and answering is the same as in Korea. However, 100 students from two colleges compete against each other. The cheer competition is also fierce. It is a knowledge competition as well as a place for university festivities. làm sinh viên chúng em rất là thích và hưởng rất là nhiều và cảm thấy một chương trình này mà nếu mà nếu mà không còn thì chắc là rất là thiếu một cái gì đó và cũng như là ở Việt Nam không có món phở thì không phải là người Việt Nam <cười> thân người Việt Nam rất là có tinh thần ham học hỏi và nếu như một chương trình giải trí họ chỉ không xem để giải trí không mà họ còn muốn học được một cái gì đó một cái thông tin bổ ích nào đó một câu hỏi nào đấy có thể họ đã quên và họ được nhắc lại trong chương trình và tôi nghĩ là nếu như thực sự là chúng ta muốn làm chương trình giáo dục tốt thì chúng ta vẫn có thể làm được với điều kiện là chúng ta phải làm đủ hấp dẫn để cho khán giả nán lại xem This Korean company-funded program captured Vietnamese youths in a heartbeat. Projecting Vietnamese university students' thirst for knowledge onto the program was a success. Vietnamese university students like programs where they can receive a wide range of knowledge and information. It is a program so loved by the Vietnamese people that just being a representative for your college is a great honor. There are parents who came up from the country to cheer their children on. The mother's eyes are focused on her son writing his answer. Hơn 
học sinh ở trường đại học sư phạm và cháu đã lọt được vào trong số 50 em học sinh để đi là dù được hay không thì là chị em chúng em là cũng đi cổ vũ cho cháu để cho nó có cái tinh thần học tập sau này và dù được thì cũng là cái tốt mà không được thì cũng là vui vẻ để giao lưu học hỏi với các bạn bè của cháu và He wanted his mother to see him ring the golden bell, but regrettably, he struck out. Vietnamese mothers would do any difficult thing for their children's education. They resemble the hard-boiled Korean mothers of the 70s. không quản đường xa xa xôi và đến đây là cổ vũ cho em và em đã có được cái động lực tinh thần rất lớn thế nhưng mà trong cái nên cuộc thi thì có nhiều cái yếu tố nó tác động đến cho nên là đã không đạt được cái ý nguyện của mình là dùng được chung vàng và điều đấy em rất tiếc. Vietnam's high passion for education adheres to Ho Chi Minh's spirit. Min Huang's father, who belongs to the typical Vietnamese middle-class family, was a foreign student of Ho Chi Minh in the 60s. It has been 40 years, but Pu Hoa cannot forget that time. This is why there is always kimchi at the table and Korean dialogues go back and forth. Pu Huang was chosen as a Ho Chi Minh student to study abroad in 1963, in the middle of the Vietnamese War. Pu Huang went to North Korea's Kim Chek College of Technology to study. His first taste of kimchi brought to mind the spirit of Ho Chi Minh. <coughs> và từ chỗ đó cho nên là nhà nước đã gửi rất nhiều du học sinh ra nước ngoài học để sau này khi chiến tranh kết thúc ấy, thì tái thiết đất nước xây dựng lại đất nước và thời kỳ đó là không những ở, ở Bắc Hàn mà nhiều nước ở Đông Âu khác là rất nhiều có thể nói là hàng chục ngàn sinh viên chứ không phải là là, là ít With the start of the Vietnamese War, the U.S.'s bombing swept across the land. Even in the midst of the war, Ho Chi Minh chose young, capable students to go to North Korea and China, to the nations in Eastern Europe to study. They left for these nations with an uncomfortable heart, pushing aside their motherland swept up in the fires of war. The words President Ho Chi Minh left behind then became the basis for Vietnam's resourceful spirit. Ngay trong cái lá thư năm 1945, cái khai giảng năm học đầu tiên thì bác Hồ của chúng tôi đã nói rằng các cháu phải học tập để mà sánh vai với các cường quốc năm châu. Và giờ phút này đi là giờ phút chúng tôi phải hành động như vậy và phải làm như vậy cho nên chắc chắn rằng Việt Nam sẽ trở thành một quốc gia phát triển. Even if everything